and they were sitting surrounding him just like a lotus flower has a floral in the middle and so many petals surrounding on all sides. So all the covered boys, they sat surrounding Sri Krishna in this way in concentric circles, one after the other after the other. So they all sat down on the ground and they began to take out their lunch bags that had been packed by their mothers uh, in the early morning hours. They were carrying them into the forest. So now they opened up their lunch bags and then they began to place all the different foodstuffs, sweets and so many wonderful preparations. They began to place them on different places like on top of rocks, some on top of leaves together, uh, some of them on top of flowers, even pieces of fruit. And in this way, very creatively, they sat together, placing their lunches in front of them. And all the covered boys were facing Sri Krishna. So, even though they were surrounding Krishna, some were behind Krishna, some were on Krishna's side, some were in front of him. But, Sri Krishna, he exhibited his potency where he can appear in the center, in front, directly in front of everyone. So every single covered boy, he began to experience that Sri Krishna was directly facing me. Sri Krishna was directly looking at me, even though they were behind Krishna. And then they thought, oh, Krishna is turning his back to the other covered boys. So in this way, Sri Krishna proves by his shakti, by his potency, that anything is possible for him because he is the absolute center and the supreme controller of everything. So for his leelas, he wanted to satisfy each and every coward boy. Therefore, he allowed them to feel and experience that they were sitting directly in front of him. So now, the coward boys began to play with one another, and they joked and they laughed, and they fed foodstuffs into each other's mouth. Some of the coward boys were placing foodstuffs in Sri Krishna's mouth, and he was placing his foodstuffs from his mouth into another coward boy's mouth. Very, very sweet, very intimate exchanges of loving uh, uh, Sakya Ras and the friendship mood. And even sometimes some of the covered boys played little jokes on one another. For example, they had a samosa and they took the contents out of the samosa and they put jasmine flowers inside of the samosa, which tastes somewhat bitter. And they gave this to another covered boy. And then when the covered boy bit into it, he made a very sour look on his face. And he became upset and started beating the other covered boy with flowers. In this way, laughing, joking, playing, Sri Krishna was sporting with his eternal associates as a little tiny covered boy. So Brahmaji, he began to think, oh, I want to see more wonderful pastimes of Sri Krishna. At that time, uh, by the influence of Yoga Maya potency, the calves began to stray away from that place. And after some time, they went into the forest area. Uh, and Sri Krishna, noticing this, oh, he told to his friends, don't worry, don't fear. You don't have to get up from your places right now. Don't disturb your lunch. I will personally go, and I will search for them. So in this way, Sri Krishna began to search for the calves. But what had taken place is that Brahmaji, he wanted to see the beautiful potencies and pastimes of Krishna. So as a trick, as Srila Gurudev said, he made some mistake. He actually took these coward boys and he, with his mystic power he exhibited, he put them into a cave. But in actuality, is that really possible for a demigod such as Brahmaji to steal the personal associates of Lord Krishna? Actually, it is not possible. So Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains that at that very moment, uh, when Brahmaji was about to steal the power of boys, Yoga Maya Potency immediately created another set of covered boys identical to those, and this is the set that Brahmaji was actually able to take and to put into the cave, thinking that now he had shown his potency to Sri Krishna. So, 
when Krishna was searching in this way, it appeared that Krishna became dismayed. Oh, where are they? Where are they? But actually, Sri Krishna was, in, was showing Brahmaji that he was just tricking him to think that he was uh, in this way bewildered. So when Krishna now returned back without finding the calves, now he came to that place and he also found that the cowherd boys were gone because Brahmaji had taken them. So now Sri Krishna, knowing that uh, if he would return into the village of Vrindavan and he would come there without the associates of the cowherd boys and the calves, well, Mother Yashoda and the elderly gopis, they would become very upset. So now Sri Krishna, he extended his own self. Bhagavan himself expanded as each and every one of the cowherd boys, identical with all of their particular individual characteristics, all of the ways that they dressed themselves, all the ways that they spoke, their different gestures, everything about them completely identical. Krishna became the cowherd boys. And also, Krishna himself became each and every calf. Thousands and thousands of calves. So now in this way, Sri Krishna, uh, in all these different forms, began to return back to the village of Vrindavan, as he would do at the end of every day, when it is dusk, and now he would come back with these long lines of calves and cowherd boys, and playing on their flutes, and dancing, and being very, very happy. When they came back to Vrindavan village, all of the rich bhasis, they were waiting for their sons, and they were waiting for Sri Krishna. But now something very extraordinary took place. Because usually all the rich bhasis, they look at Sri Krishna. He is the sinister of their eyes. They're so much absorbed in him, and they're taking delight in drinking his beauty. Now at this time, they looked at their own sons, and also the calves, the cows, the, the mother cows, they were looking at their children, and in this way, they became so much attached to their sons. Now the sons entered into the homes of each and every one of the older gopis in Vrindavan, and now each and every older gopi in Vrindavan was able to personally bathe their sons, dress their sons, feed their sons, because this was Sri Krishna's causeless mercy to them. Krishna always wants to satisfy the hearts of his devotees. So in this case, Sri Krishna, he became each and every one of their sons because they had a desire that they could have Sri Krishna as their very own son. They love him even more than their own son. So now Sri Krishna actually became their son. And uh, in this way, for one year, Sri Krishna was going every day into the uh, pasture grounds, into the forest, playing all kinds of games, but this was all manifested by Krishna himself. And during that one year period, there was also one uh, event which took place, and that is that uh, Gargacharya, yeah, Gargacharya, who was the like the guru of the rich bhasis and the great astrologer, he told to them that this is the most auspicious time. This year is the best time for us to arrange for the marriages of all the young uh, Gobi girls. They were very, very young, like five years old. And now it is time to betroth them so that they can know who their husband will be in the future. So all the covered boys should be matched up with the young little covered girls and they should become married by betrothal. In the Vedic system, they would become married at a very young age, but they would not live with their husbands until they were mature. So during this one year period, Sri Krishna performed this pastime as well that as the covered boys, he personally became the husband of each and every one of the Gopi girls, because that was their desire. So Sri Krishna also satisfied their desire in this way. 
Now, as this time was going by, uh, one day when the uh, the coward men were raising the cows on the top of Govardhan Hill, and Baladev Prabhu was also there, he was watching, and the coward men were holding their cows and raising them, but below at the bottom of the hill, all the calves came with Sri Krishna. Uh, and all the coward boys. And when the cows saw the calves, they immediately became so overwhelmed and they began running, hopping and hobbling down the hill with all of their four legs very, very fast and the coward men were trying to hold them back. But they could not. And now the coward men, they also saw their little sons. And they began running down the hill as well because they were attracted to embrace their sons. Their, over, their heart was overwhelmed with transcendental love for them. And so Baladev Prabhu was watching this as the cows were leading the calves, as the coward men were embracing their sons. And Baladev, who is the first expansion of Sri Krishna himself, he knows everything. But somehow, he was wondering, how is this possible that they are having so much affection for, for their coward, for their uh, young boys, and the calves are having so much affection for their calf, the cows are having affection for their calves in the same way that the rich bosses love Krishna. How is this possible? And then at that time, he went to Sri Krishna, and Krishna smiled, and then at that time, only Baladev Prabhu could understand that Sri Krishna was performing this pastime of expanding himself because Brahmaji had stolen all the calves and the coward boys. So also during this time period, one year had passed. But actually, in the time of Lord Brahma, it was only like one or two moments of time in Brahmaji's long duration of time. But during that time, after he had stolen the calves and the coward boys, he went back to his planet Brahmalok. And when he approached the palace, his very own palace, the palace guards stopped him. They said, stop there, you cannot enter. And he said, what are you talking about? I am your master, I am Brahmaji, this is my palace. They said, no, 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 you are an imposter. What do you mean imposter? They said, yes, our master, he's there inside of the palace. He's sitting on the throne and he told us that another false imposter who's posing as you, as Brahma, that he will come and he will try to enter in, you should stop him. So who was this? This was Sri Krishna. He had expanded himself also as Brahmaji himself. And now Brahma was very bewildered. <laughs> so now Brahmaji understood, oh, I have made some mistake here. And now Brahma again came back down to the earthly plane. When he came back down there, he looked and he saw that on the same place, on the bank of the Jamuna, where he had stolen away the, the power boys and all the calves, he saw that they were there. Now he became very amazed. They're all there. And he wondered, whoa, maybe Krishna has gone and found them in the cave and he has brought them back. So he went and he looked in the cave. He saw that they were also there in the cave. And now he really wondered what's going on here. And with his four heads, he looked in both directions. Huh? He looked both sides and he saw that they were in both places simultaneously. So now Brahmaji became quite aware that Krishna's superior mystic powers had completely thwarted his attempt. And in this way, Brahmaji began to consider, oh, I've made a serious mistake. So at this time, uh, when Brahmaji came there and looked at all the coward boys sitting and all the calves, Sri Krishna began to reveal to Brahmaji a vision he could actually see. Because suddenly, all the copper boys transformed into amazing Vishnu forms, thousands and thousands of beautiful Vishnu forms with golden crowns and with so many ornaments on their bodies. And all the calves, they transformed also into Vishnu forms. Even all their paraphernalia, the covering sticks, their bugles, their flutes, everything, all their clothing, everything transformed into Vishnu 
forms. Now she, she uh, Brahmaji, he became so amazed that, and astonished. He saw that actually this potency of Krishna is billions and billions of times greater than mine. And now Brahmaji realized that he had committed a, a great mistake. Even Amarat, he felt he had committed an offense against Krishna to try to test his mystic power. So, nearby, in the forest area, Brahmaji, he began, he came and he saw that Sri Krishna was standing alone in the forest with another coward friend and Brahmaji came down there in that lonely forest place and he saw that Sri Krishna was standing there just like a little five-year-old boy with a lump of food, like a, a latu in his hand. And the other coward boy was seeing this great, huge demigod coming down from his swan carrier. And Brahmaji came down with his golden crowns on his head and paid obeisances in the lotus feet of Sri Krishna with tears in his eyes. But Sri Krishna just stood there completely unmoved. And even the coward boy was joking with Krishna. He said, oh look, four heads, four heads, like this. So now, Brahmaji, very apologetically, he began to offer very reverent prayers to Sri Krishna. He began to tell that, oh, Sri Krishna, if anyone says that they understand you, I say that they don't understand anything. Because my, my mind, my uh, mystic power can comprehend the entire universe. Uh, but, it, but your mystic power is millions and billions of times greater than mine. Just like the sun is billions and billions of times more powerful than the fireflies. Uh, there is no potency in comparison. And Sri Brahmaji began to glorify Sri Krishna that even if someone could count each and every particle of sand on every single beach, on every single ocean, they would never even begin to estimate the extent of your power, of your glories. And Brahmaji, he prayed these various verses called the uh, Brahmastuti. And he also told there uh, that if someone just understands that they must pray to you for mercy, he said, this is the way by which anyone can come to attain you if they understand that everything that is going on in their life, that it is a result of their own previous karmic activities, sufferings and enjoyments. And if they simply pray from the core of their heart for your causeless mercy, constantly with their mind, with their body, with their words, serving you in this way, in this way, they will become the rightful inheritor. Dayabak means like an inheritance that you get just by taking birth in the family. In this way, you gain the inheritance of your parents. So, Sri Krishna, so if someone serves Sri Krishna in this mood, in this way, they will automatically attain service, eternal service to his lotus feet. And Brahmaji at that time, in great humility, he prayed that I want to become just like a piece of stone. Because in Braj, the people who come to sleep and clean in the uh, bathrooms, toilets, areas, they will wash their feet at night at the end of the day on a stone. And Brahmaji understood that these bridge bosses are so exalted they are so transcendental personalities that I want to become simply a stone that their lotus feet may scrape against me. And he prayed, a whole bag yam, a whole bag yam, nam de goma prajoka sa, yam mitram paramanam gam, brahma, purna brahma sanatanam. He said, a whole bag yam, how fortunate, how amazingly fortunate are these residents of Braj that live in the village of Nanda Maharaj because Yanvikram, just like their very own friend, 
their very own family member. This Purna Brahma Sanatana, let us talk about Sri Krishna, who is the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Eternal, Supreme Topmost Being of all beings. He has become just like their intimate little friend. In this way, Sri Brahmaji, he began to glorify Sri Krishna, and at that time, Sri Krishna forgave Brahma for his offense, and at the end, Brahmaji again went on his small carrier and returned to his planet, Brahmaloka. So in this way, the pastimes of Sri Krishna in Braj Lila are so sweet because they show that even though Sri Krishna exhibited such great powers, he never changed his form, only very sweet like a little coward boy. And he, Krishna in Vrindavan, he never shows powerful forms or Vishnu forms, and he never calls weapons to kill any demons, because his land is the Madhurya Dham. It is overwhelmed by sweetness. So all the pastimes of Sri Krishna are full of sweetness and transcendental pleasure, and anyone who hears these pastimes becomes purified and gains transcendental love for Sri Krishna. Cows are thinking of 
keep pressuring from our tasks, then our life will be successful. Other hand, Prime Minister Dr. Kaul Bresi, coming back to Braj, all Sakas glorify him. And when it is the Kami Braj, the other mother, the Sakisa mother Yasoda, they kiss Krishna and took him on their lap, one after another. At last, mother Yasoda kissed Krishna, holding Krishna on her lap, Guru Nanda Baba. All mother took copies, they are thinking of hope. Jasoda is so fortunate. If Krishna is our own son, then our life will be successful. Other hand, come on, don't sit inside the ladies. Please come, male side. On the other hand, young Gopi girls, they are thinking of hope. If Krishna is our karma, then our life will be successful. So three different desires, three different persons, the young gopis, mother young gopis and cows. After the current Krishna Karnya Pasa, by so one action he accomplished so many tasks. So Krishna, what to do now? So he attracts Ramadhi to help him in this Lila. And moreover, Baladevaru is Krishna's Tadekarmaru, his first expansion. If Krishna wants to do some first time, everything not possible in front of Baladevaru. When Janma Vimalila took place, that day it was monthly constellation of Baladevaru. So for that day, Baladevaru had to donate some cows, so many auspicious things, and to donate Brahmins, this and that. So he hold Nanda Baba by Mother Yasoda and Mother Rahini. So Baladevaru could not go there and have them for cow raising. Suppose Baladevaru could go there, then Brahma could not be held and Baladevaru could still all of them. So first Krishna separated Baladevaru from other coward boys that he took place. So all this reason is there. When Krishna became cows and cowherd boys, then what happened? The cows are when the cows are going and taking meat from cows order, then they are eating so much that they want to keep the outer old cows inside their heart. Why? Because Krishna became cow himself. The second one. When Krishna coming back from the cow raising, now the mother of you gopis, they are not thinking that take Krishna first and other than their own son. When they are coming, they are taking their own son, going to back their house. Why so? Because Krishna became their own son. The third one, the young gopis, they want to go, Krishna is our husband, our life will be successful. What Gurgajaki announced is the best time to marry everybody's son and daughter. So, according to Gurgajaki's tradition, they did so. So now, what happened? The young Gopi girl, they married in Krishna, also not in Krishna form, other go for her, and she was Krishna. For this reason, Krishna did from a woman Lila. When Krishna was Brahma revealed that Krishna himself and due to him it happened. Then he prayed that Tat Guri Bhattam Ya Jamnami Matapam Ya Dokleo Mihatamam Ya Jyoti Sekam Ya Jivitam Tu Nikhilam Thalavan Kunda Sapala Yasuti Mingam Eva Tat Guri Bhattam Ya Jamnami Matapam Brahma is praying to Krishna, oh, I want to take part in this Vrindavan. Our chapter one chapter and other commentator is chanting, O Brahma, what you first have done that you want to pass in Vrindavan? Not possible at all. Then Gokul you have been, then I can take part in Gokul. This was very, do you think Gokul is intelligent to Vrindavan? I took 